Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Lonnie Coon, thank you so much for joining us. And Paul Holes, I'm excited you both are here to talk about Oxygen's death at the mansion. I'm really excited about this. And if we can get started, women are always first in my world. Lonnie, give us a, a preview. Well, you know, this is a case that I think a lot of people heard about when it first happened because Rebecca Zahao was found hanging naked from a balcony outside. She had her hands bound behind her back and her feet bound, and she was gagged uh, in her mouth with a, a shirt. And so a lot of people said, what in the world is going on here? A woman's just not going to end up like that. Um, and the police ruled it a suicide. And I think every woman said there's no way any woman's going to commit suicide like that, hanging naked outside, bound and gagged like that. So we are looking into this case, um, trying to figure out what really happened here. The police continue to rule it a suicide. And so the first question we were looking at is, is this a suicide or something else? Paul, you're a forensic criminologist. What is your, your, your you bring to this story for us? Because we're regular people at home watching this. Well, you know, my background uh, is I've worked as a forensic scientist, as a crime scene investigator, as an investigator. So I know when I initially saw this case and I was looking at the crime scene photos, from my perspective, I said, that does not look right, especially with the official ruling as a suicide. So that I end up bringing my expertise and experience, having been involved in many homicide cases and suicide cases, to try to look at the fine details and see, could we figure out one or the other? What theory predominates based on the evidence? Bonnie, you're a former uh, criminal prosecutor, mm -hmm. and you're the co-host of this, but you're doing double duty here. Mm -hmm. What do you want us to walk away with? Because how does this intertwine into our regular lives? We're sitting at home just watching TV and popcorn. Yeah. You know, I think uh, I want people, first of all, to really know Rebecca. I think in the media, all you heard about was sort of the, you know, the salacious details of how her body was found. But an important thing we had to do was dig in and find out who she was, talk to her family members, talk to her friends, find out what type of personality she had. What was her state of mind at the time of her death? Um, she was a, a very worldly person. She was educated in Austria. She spoke six languages. She, you know, was focused on her career. She was a very full, vibrant person. Um, and, you know, with such a tragic death, people just focus on that. But I also want people to be able to see what happens when you look at a case like this and trying to determine what really happened. What are the steps that you take? You, you talk to experts. You talk to family members. You talk to law enforcement to really try and get to the truth of what was going on here. Paul, what about the uh, billionaire boyfriend? How does he play into this? Or what does the story tell us about him? Well, anytime you're investigating a case, you're looking at a wide variety of possible theories. And anytime you look at somebody who has a lot of money, you have to consider how that could be impacting the case itself. And that's what we do as we explore these theories in the show. There's so many theories, uh, Lonnie. Uh, from what I understand, Rebecca had a six-year-old son who had suffered a fatal accident just prior to that. Well, actually, she was watching her boyfriend's son. It was uh, Max, ah. six years old. And two days prior to Rebecca's death, he had a fall that put him in a coma in the hospital. And he was still in that coma at the time of Rebecca's death two days later. He did end up dying uh, a few days after Rebecca did. So the question was, here we have these two very mysterious things going on in this mansion uh, with close in time. Are they related? Are they connected in some way? And we look at that. I've got to ask you, Paul, when you have a lot of money, is there any leeway that the police and the investigators give you? Because it seems that way to us. Well, you know, just in a very general sense, anytime you're investigating a case and you see that there is somebody that has power and influence, you have to understand how that could impact uh, local authorities. And that's something that is explored in the show. I want to thank you guys for giving us just a sneak preview. Lonnie, when are we going to watch this on Oxygen? Because you guys make it sound so informative. 
It starts this Saturday, June 1st at 6 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time on Oxygen, and then it goes for four consecutive Saturdays, so it's four episodes. Ooh, I like that. Oh, okay. I want to thank Lottie Coombs and Paul Holt for talking about Death in a Mansion on Oxygen. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. <laughs>